It's been almost five months since Nvidia launched their RTX 20 series graphics card. Now, two of the key features that Nvidia promoted their graphics card with were real-time ray tracing and deep learning super sampling. But up until yesterday, zero games actually supported those two key features. So yesterday Battlefield 5 has seen an update to incorporate the deep learning super sampling or DLSS technology into their game. Granted, it only works when you have ray tracing enabled, making it the first game ever to support both technologies. Tomorrow, we'll also see the launch of Metro Exodus, which also supports both ray tracing and DLSS. But did this entire technology actually already mature enough such that the regular player can benefit from real-time ray tracing and DLSS without having to deal with a huge performance drop, basically rendering the game unplayable or is this still somewhat sort of a tech demo? So in today's video, I'd like to answer the question how much performance loss you have to deal with when enabling ray tracing at the three different presets that is low, medium and ultra. What can DLSS do in order to alleviate some of that performance drop? So how much performance gain can you expect when enabling DLSS? And finally, what is the quality going to be like when having DLSS enabled compared to just running normal anti-aliasing. Now before jumping right into the results, let's first have a quick look at the technology used. Real-time ray tracing is making use of the RT cores on RTX graphics cards. That's obviously also where the name comes from. And these you can think of like a different part on your graphics cards, just like the CUDA cores, you now have RT cores. And basically all what they're doing is computing rays. So if you're not enabling ray tracing, these cores are basically idling. Now, if you have no idea what ray tracing is or how it works at all, then I'll leave a link in the top right hand corner that very nicely explains how ray tracing works. Now, up until recently, real time ray tracing in Battlefield 5 would use so much performance that it was basically unplayable with ray tracing enabled. And this is now where DLSS comes in to help. Now, DLSS is basically just a smart way to do anti aliasing. And the way they do this is they train a neural network. So that's basically just AI. Um, they train it with very high resolution imagery of a particular game. So in this case, Battlefield 5. They train it on their supercomputers and try to make their model as good as possible in predicting how an image is supposed to look when you give it a low resolution image. So basically what DLSS does is, at least from what I understand, is it runs your game at a lower resolution than you've actually set it to. So if you're running at 1440p, the game will effectively only run at 1080p and then AI will be used to upscale the image to 1440p. So in theory, this trick increases performance by simply rendering at a much lower resolution, which requires less power for ray tracing and less power for rasterization, and then just use the tensor cores to upscale the image to the native resolution. But what's the image actually gonna look like after all of this treatment? Is it gonna be as sharp as the original image? Let's find out. So this is exactly what you can see right here. On the left hand side I have only RTX enabled, whereas on the right hand side I additionally also enabled DLSS. Now the difference is probably going to be quite difficult to see on YouTube and therefore I'm showing you a bit of a zoomed in version here where you can very clearly see that DLSS produces a much smoother and less sharp image than without DLSS. This effect is even more noticeable if you look at objects that are quite far away and that are rather small. And while some part of this image definitely look worse with DLSS, for example the trees, I also have to say that for example the railing on the bridge in fact looks much better with DLSS than without. In general when playing the game the effect of DLSS is much more noticeable than in these screenshots that I'm showing here, which is also why I'm showing this little segment here whilst actually playing such that you can form your own opinion whether you like with DLSS as shown right here or without as shown right now. Next, let's have a look at the prime example why ray tracing in certain circumstances can be a very strong improvement in visual fidelity. So here on the left hand side, we can see this room, which is actually quite reflective without RTX and it just looks very flat and not very uh, realistic. Whereas all of the other presets show with RTX enabled. Note how amazingly clearly you can see the player reflected on the ground on the RTX low preset 
and how you can see falling stuff that is reflected on the ground in the Ultra preset. Now, to be honest, the difference between the different presets doesn't really grant the very strong performance hit that you have to deal with with RTX at Ultra. So in my opinion, RTX at low is definitely good enough if you want to have any ray tracing in game. But how about that performance drop? How much are you gonna have to pay for these shiny reflections? Now, before looking at the actual performance numbers, let's have a look at my graphical options. So I'm running the game at 1440p and with a field of view of 90 degrees and with all of the chromatic abbreviation, etc. disabled, I must run with the X12 because otherwise ray tracing doesn't work and I have future frame rendering enabled. Now, as you can see, I am not running the game at ultra settings. I'm running at the settings that I'm shown here because I like to have a bit more performance in my game and I don't think that the performance hit that you have to pay for playing at ultra is worth it for the very minimal improvement in visual fidelity. Note that I have set anti-aliasing to TAA low. So these are the long-awaited performance benchmarks. As you can see, I have around 150 FPS when playing the game without ray tracing or DLSS. Now, performance decreases to around 90 FPS when enabling ray tracing at the low preset and increases just very marginally to 93 FPS when we add DLSS. The medium presets gives me around 87 FPS and the increase when enabling DLSS almost reaches the level of having ray tracing at the low setting with DLSS. Finally, the ultra ray tracing preset gives me a measly 52 FPS, which is then boosted to around 70 FPS when enabling DLSS. So overall, you can say that at the ultra preset, the gain from DLSS is the highest but still, if you run at low or medium, you still gain a few FPS by enabling DLSS. So coming back to our original question, is this technology actually already viable for the regular gamer? And in all honesty, I have to say, I don't think so. First of all, the RTX cards are still very expensive and even with an RTX 2080, such as I have, at 1440p, I'm not really getting reasonable FPS. Now granted, if I enable the LSS, then I do get somewhat playable frame rates. It does feel much smoother, I have to agree. It's actually a very nice experience, but unfortunately, the image quality is just not quite there yet. But then again, this is not such a big deal because Nvidia can simply improve upon the LSS by improving their AI model in their supercomputers and simply distributing a new driver once a new version is ready. And therefore, in the long run, DLSS might actually prove to be a viable option to run ray tracing at the same time. Now, one thing I'd also like to mention is that I really hope that Nvidia enables DLSS without ray tracing. I think currently um, the way it works is that Nvidia is probably training their AI model using ray tracing. So it actually has ray tracing baked into the DLSS profile and therefore you can't just run DLSS without having ray tracing enabled. But I really hope that they're gonna do an additional profile without ray tracing, enabling everybody that doesn't really want ray tracing to use or make use of DLSS, which would vastly improve upon the performance of pretty much every gamer. But what do you think about real-time ray tracing and DLSS? Is this all just a marketing gag, or do you think this has the potential to become the next revolutionary technology? Let me know in the comments below. Now, if you like this kind of videos, then I would really appreciate it if you could leave me a like. If you disliked it, then that's no problem, leave a dislike. Subscribe for more videos like this. Thank you very much for watching. Have a wonderful day and I'll see you guys in the next video.